Welcome back, race fans, to Off the Track Podcast, where you get the dirt. I'm Levi Ray Gotze, and we are here at Blue Chip Technologies Racing Engines. We are a high-performance race engine shop located right here in Heltonville, Indiana. And today we have joining us on the show, Jack and Bradley Fry. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm glad you guys made it down today. Yeah, it's not too far from home. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably what forty-five minute drive for you guys. Yeah, probably something yeah, like a that. A little, little nice scenic drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in my old stomping area. It would have uh, been a little more scenic had you came the way Jack wanted to drive yeah. down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> instead, yeah. Of, instead of the GPS. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, we got you guys down here to talk about some dirt racing. Uh, Jack, we know that you've been doing it for many years and just hung the helmet up here recently. Let's uh, kind of hear how you got your start. Well, basically I got my start because my mom's brother, the late Ronnie Rhodes, raced, and uh, my other uncle, Ari Baston, who raced with your grandpa for many a times. And yeah. My dad quit when all of us kids wanted to go fishing, camping, and he just didn't have the time to do it with all of us with his work. So when I got older, I helped them guys a little bit, and Dad would take me around them, and I always wanted one, and so I ended up getting one. Dad helped me get one. Right. And started it, and it went on from there, you know. Yeah. It's one of them things that you, when you're a kid, you know you want to try it, and once you try it, you're hooked. My dad, yeah. My dad told me that you'll know the day when you want to hang the helmet up. You'll know it. He said, otherwise, you'll continue doing it. So uh, how old were you? Oh, gosh. Now you had to ask that. It was back in 1982, 81. 82. 81, okay. yep. Well, that's about 38, 39 years ago. Mm -hmm. As off and on, I, I set out a couple of years. When my daughter got married, I didn't have the money for the car plus, you know, her wedding. So, you know, it didn't bother me none. It's kind of nice to sit out a year, you know. I went to all the big races and watched them and stuff, the big right. football shows and stuff. And then I set out the year when uh, he turned 16 and we went and bought a truck and took it down to the frame and redone it and yeah and give it to him and you know and then just uh was that your uh your dad's truck you're talking no, about no. Or? when okay. i turned 16 we were done my truck okay yeah. i found him a four-wheel drive three-quarter ton and we brought it to the house and you know i'll set the race car over to the side and yeah we, we stripped it all the way down the frame and there redone you go. it and he drove it from then on and uh, nice you know but you, you just you never want to get rid of all your stuff right because you, know, you still think ah uh, and it's kind of nice to get away from it for a little bit, but mm -hmm. you, even when you're not driving, you still go watch because you got too many friends. It's it's another family you got, you know. Even though you might right. be competitors on a track and and you know want to cuss at them, yeah, and because of something, but you're not doing it intentionally. It's a racing deal, and right, you know, the next week if something happened, you'd be right over helping them work on their car. Or they'd be helping you. So, Absolutely, you know, it's a win-win situation. Yep. So uh, you know, you you done it for. 30 plus years then yep um you know you guys uh were very successful with it Yep. ran the super stock division for as long as i can remember yep, i'm not sure if you ever did dabble in any other division or not nope nope i started in it and you know far as money wise you know i'd always thought about getting a modified but then you know it's more money mm -hmm. and Really ain't chasing much more money to win either. No, I mean no, I can understand. Not a whole Unless you're going to go out and hit a big show, uh, I mean it's yeah. most local tracks. It's not a whole lot more. Mm -mm. As and the, far bad, as the, purse. the bad thing about the sportsman division or super stocks, you know, we're basically set running right here in Indiana. Mm -hmm. You know, because they ain't got the rules where we can go to Illinois or something like that. And I can understand why the younger generation wants a modified because you can go yeah. anywhere you want and run. It's right, like, hot and, going class right now. And if, you, mm -hmm. and if you can go to a big show and start dead last, you're running with the best. And you're right. going to get better. You know, yep. you're going to get better when you're running with the best. That's and right. That's just the way it is. But mm -hmm. money and technology, some has helped racing, but it also has hurt it. Yeah. It's, you know, either way, it goes both directions. Right. Double-edged sword. Yeah. yeah. It is. So <clears throat> I, I have no idea uh... – how many wins do you think you've got in that division over all those years? Uh, Is that something you ever kept track of or just kept nope, I've got, hanging the trophies up? And, I've got the first trophy in my garage with my granddaughter's name wrote on it, my first grandchild's. Yeah. And then from then on, I've got five grandkids, and I've got all their names on them. The other ones, 
Them's the first five. Them's the ones I, I don't care about the other ones. Yeah. Because each one of them kids are going to get that. I don't care what they do with it when I'm gone. Right. But my first granddaughter is going to get that very first win one, and then that's the way I went. Well, that's on. cool. Yeah. I just, you know, because I don't know. When you're gone, you that's a piece of you that you give to them. Yeah. And uh, I think my best, I don't know if you're going to ask this question, but I'll, I'll pop it out before you do. <laughs> My best, most liked race. Or yeah, one most gives memorable me, race yeah. or something, yeah. It was Father's Day weekend up at Bloomington, and I won. Okay. And they gave me the trophy, and I handed it to my dad and said, Happy Father's Day. That's awesome. And he just thought I'd give him a million dollars. Just lit his world up. He took that trophy and had the date put on it and the year and everything on it. Yeah. I mean, made it because, you know, and he's, it's still at my mom's house yeah. today. Yeah. Because, you know, that meant more to him. Oh, yeah. You know, to recognize that, you know, because that's who brought you into this. Right. Into this bad, addictive sport. Right. You, know, you can blame your parents. Yeah, for it. exactly. <laughs> yeah, most of us can, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah, he uh, he was always with you guys. Yep, I mean, everywhere. I don't know if I remember seeing you guys at the track without him. No. Nope. No. I mean, he, I feel like he was there unless his health was down. Right. Yep. When he started getting where he couldn't drive, I even offered to go down and get him. Yeah. And bring him to the racetrack. Mm-hmm. And he just said, no, I'm just getting a little tired. I couldn't stay up that late. And you know then that you yeah. know, he's not going to be around one day to watch you do it. And, right. And it's changed a lot. You yeah. Know? You know, it's it's just a way of life, but it's still, it's still it's your dad, you know. And, mm-hmm. and he was out there. I can remember when he wouldn't go to the races and. I finished second one night in Bloomington, and I called him, and I said, to, he goes, how'd you do? I said, I said, what the F did you do? Second, you're supposed to be first. And he was teasing me, though, but, yeah. you know, he just giving me that little encouragement, right. you know, he's still going to try harder. So, uh, I take it, you probably pass that right down to Bradley. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yep. you guys make, you made the decision you was going to get out of the seat, uh, I guess it would have been the end of 2018. Yep. Yep. And you were going to jump in the seat at the beginning of 2019. I've been wanting it for a long time, but yeah. had to do some. Uh, made you earn it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shop time. Yeah. Plenty of uh, plenty yeah. of shop time to earn those, you know, seats and. Well, you know, to me, nothing against NASCAR, but how many of them young guys in them cars in there could tear one apart, and put it back together? Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. Not saying it, man. He, I made him. You know, you got to learn how to build the bodies. You got to learn to do that. I mean, mm-hmm. sure, you got friends that helps you and stuff, but they're not there all the time, right? So you got to be able to know how to use the tools and do what. And and he'd have had it a lot longer earlier if mm-hmm. he wouldn't have been out doing his wild oats, if he's, yeah. as Dad would say. Yeah, so. had a little growing up to do, maybe. Yeah, yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Took me a little longer than others, but I'm here now. Well, that's all that matters. That's yeah. right. So you guys broke the car out last season. Uh, seems like you uh, ran Brownstown a lot. Yeah, I stayed right there and focused on just Brownstown. I wanted that rookie of the year. That was my goal. And, and you guys got it. I accomplished it. So That's a good goal, Yeah, mm-hmm. especially at Brownstown. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Uh, from what I remember, you look pretty good out there. Uh, I feel like you'd driven a few times, maybe in mechanic races and stuff in I'd the past. Ran, I'd ran the, what, three or four mm-hmm. fun fests previous to that. Yeah. To get myself a little seat time, and then I took over last year. So. There you go. I just let him have fun fest all his, you know, go down there and practice, run as much right. as you want. And, and that had to help you out. Oh, yeah. tremendously. Big confidence booster jumping in the seat for the, you know, first you know season have mm-hmm. knowing that you can at least get it around the track yeah, and hold uh, your keep, line yeah keep the car under yeah. you know, because uh you know brownstown can be a challenge by itself as far as uh just getting around the track yeah without spinning out you know uh running off the corner or <laughs> yeah. you know it, any track it, it's easy to do that running, but, off the, uh, running off the corner that's that goes back to last year's fun fest when i told dad i was gonna learn the top yeah You'll be over the bank, and I did it twice last uh-huh. year, the last fun fest I ran. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Trying to find that fine line between <laughs> yes. out of control and <laughs> yeah. gone. Yep. Yeah, it, chasing that top, it can be fun. Uh, of course, it's nice when there's a little cushion up mm-hmm. there, but Brownstown, a lot of times, it seems like it's uh, 
just a little dusty and you can just <laughs> and you're yep. gone and there's well, there's no cushion like at bloomington where you can just bank it off of it and run you know yeah. he'll find that out this that's, year. that's what i was gonna say i'll find that out this year yeah so you guys ran brownstown <laughs> pretty well every weekend then yes and just focused right there right there so you've not actually got to go to any other tracks I because ran, of your dedication to getting that rook, rookie of the year then. I ran Kokomo at the end of the season okay. after Brownstown was over with. That well, place is a blast. Yeah. It's fun. It is. I agree. We went up there one time when we were running Super Stocks uh, for the Kokomo Clash. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2017. And, man, I had a blast. It I, was, lo I love that track. It was fun. <clears throat> I mean, we had a good time. I've raced there and I raced Gas City. I like both of them. It's just you know, it's you're talking two hour, three hour drive, and you know, you're yeah. gas getting in it. And it's just, oh yeah, you know, it's it's a very expensive sport. But you well, still want to do it at least okay. once or twice a year. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth the drive up there. Exactly. <laughs> well, I had an interesting night. We went up there and they had like thirty seven super stocks. I thought, man, there's no way I'm gonna make this show. And then. <laughs> I think Randy Lines was up there and, you know, one of these really good cars. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a lot of them look like a modified. Yep. Somehow we managed to make it in the show. And I'm sitting up there in the stands, and I think I was watching uh, Jared Bailey's uh, late model feature. He was running against that uh, 89 car. Mm -hmm. And uh, sparks flying off the wall. And I'm <laughs> enjoying the heck out of it. And I get a text on my phone that says something about my truck being stolen and i'm thinking that's weird you know my wife's sitting here next to me and i start telling her about it and her face just gets red well, i guess she loaned my truck out to a family member i didn't know anything about it and it <laughs> broke down well someone's seen it on a rollback and then they're calling me saying why is your truck on a rollback i'm three hours away from home trying to figure all this out before i'm getting in the car and uh yeah that's how our night but we ended up coming up through there we had to start 18th i think we ended up eighth mm -hmm. seventh maybe i started 19th and got 11th there you go so it wasn't it's a bad. lot of fun whenever you're yes. moving forward mm -hmm. up there on that track it's a blast i mean they uh they definitely do a good job with the car count they get yes. trying to keep everything yep. rolling uh i'd like to go up there sometime in the modified for yep. sure um I know the late models and sprint cars get around there good. No, the late models put on too, a good show. Yeah, it's Real good it show. was really cool watching them guys. So uh, this season, you guys are, uh, I'm sure you're going to be hitting Bloomington. Yes. Yep. yep. I mean, yep. that's. Two miles from home, you know, you got to go there. <laughs> that's, you know, growing up as a kid, Jack Fry, you know, yep. Jack Fry all the time. You know. King of sponsors. Win, win, win. Yep. Uh, it just, it, I knew that that would, was always your home track. Yep. And uh, with them not running much last year, I'm sure that was an easy decision to choose Brownstown for you yep. guys. Um, but now Bloomington, they're going to be running, uh, you know, a pretty good schedule. Yeah, they're going to run us 13, 14 times this year, which that's, that's I'm, tickled, great. I'm tickled to death with it. You know? Yeah. I don't ever want to see it close. No way. Right. You know, we got so many people who want to complain about the racetrack, mm -hmm. they forget. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, you go into Brownstown, you know, go to Terre Haute, go to Bloomington, you were out in the country. Mm -hmm. Now our cities grow to our racetracks. They need to forget, you know. Yeah. The racetrack wasn't put there just a month ago. Right. It was it's there, been there a long, long time. Before. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, and that's the reason why we didn't run but one time last year. If Bloomington would have been running, he'd, and he needs more seat time. Yeah. It's just, you know, plus with his work, you know, that mm -hmm. comes first. And so. Yep. But that's our goal, to run Bloomington and Brownstown both next year. Try it'll, be, to anyway. it'll be a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, Jack Fry's name is always who I thought of as, you know, growing up, going to Brown or Bloomington on right. a Friday night. I mean, that was pretty well one of the top dogs in the yes. super stock division. Of course, back then it was street stocks. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, I, I remember some of my family ran them. Yep. Uh, of course, years ago, they used to look a lot more like a car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is true. Uh, this looked like the old Camaros back in. Yep. Yeah. So what do you uh, what do you go to for your dad on advice as far as... Man. 
Does he uh, does he give you any good pointers as I don't far need as to, I don't think I need to go to him for advice. That advice has already been given yeah, before I'm even before ready for it. Before you're even going, huh? Yeah, before I'm even ready for it. Mainly just uh, constantly tells me to use my head, you know. Yeah. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. and, uh, keep your nose clean. Yeah. And don't second guess yourself because you're you'll end up in a bad situation. Make sure you're uh, going to do it. Don't hesitate about it. Yeah. So. It's good and, advice. And I try to get him to watch the other street stock races. Mm -hmm. you know, I know you're focusing it, wanting to work on your car and do what you want to do down there in the pits. But you, to me, going up there watching other drivers, you're seeing what they're doing, how they're going entering the corner and all that. And I know you can watch all the other divisions too, but you're mm -hmm. focusing driving with these guys, these right. guys who you're going to race with. Yeah. You know, just it's different when you're not racing. You can go up and watch the races, but when you yeah. know you're going to get out there and race beside that guy, yeah, you know, watch you can learn he, a lot. Exactly, Have, and watch how he enters the corner. And just watch, running. watch where he's wanting to run, where he's yeah. comfortable with being, to where you know mm -hmm. how to. You come up on him, you're going to know how to get around him. Yeah, so that's good advice. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can definitely learn a lot from, like when uh, Brownstown was uh doing the in the fast lane videos mm -hmm. i mean i'd watch those mm -hmm. and yep. wow you could learn a lot just yes, watching those yep. uh, i went back a lot last year and watched myself and watched yeah. and you don't realize what you're making mistakes in the car because it's happening so quick mm -hmm. but when you can go back and see that video yeah you pick up on so much on what you're doing That's wrong right. or what you're doing to help yourself at one time we had a. Uh, you know, my wife would video from the stands, mm -hmm. and then we had an in-car GoPro camera, yep. you know, mounted in the car. And I'd go home, upload each video, and time them right yep. to where I could watch what I was doing mm -hmm. and, and, see the, outside, and the outside of the car. The, and I learned a lot mm -hmm. watching that. But uh, we were going through GoPros more than we were right rear tires. <laughs> so we decided not to buy any more GoPros. So, yeah, we well, we yeah. lost one at Terre Haute. We lost, I don't know how many things we went through. <laughs> Dad the, was funding them there for a while, and finally he was like, I ain't buying no more. <laughs> it's the old saying is seat time. Yeah. Yep. The more and more you're in that car, the more you're going to learn. It's just like anything The else. more feel you're going to get for it, and you're going to pick up on it. And this year... And he bought him a new seat, and we put it mm -hmm. in there the way he wanted it because, you know, he didn't like my seat. And yeah. We moved the steering. I mean, we redone. We took it all the way down the bare chassis, took it over to Gums, and had it put on the jig and made sure everything's all right. There and you we, go. Then we brought it back home and put the seat in. Take the seat out. Put the seat in. Yeah. It he, might be a four-year-old car, but every nut and bolt's brand new. There found, you go. He found out how to jig something up. You know, it takes time to yeah. make it right. Right. And, uh, so, so here's the big question. How many hours or days did it take to mount the seat? It took me a week and a half to mount that seat. There you go. If that tells yeah. everybody how long and how much time. I yep. put it in and out of that car, I think, a dozen times before I finally put it in the last time. Had a driver over the weekend <laughs> I was talking with. I was down at Brownstown for practice, and uh, we were talking about him getting his seat mounted and mm -hmm. how long it took him. And they started it like, I think, they said 8 a.m. It was either start at 10 a.m. got down at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Either ways, it was 10 or 12 hour deal, yeah. pretty much. And uh, I said, well, "That's really not that bad." And he was kind of looking at me like he was going to punch me. And yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, "I've spent more than that. Two days, yeah. three days." It, well, he had to, you know, get the seat in there. Then he he bought these new style seat belts. I bought that he the wanted. I bought the new hooker harness belts. Yeah. Because uh, I'm so little, mm -hmm. the other ones were digging in my collarbones and digging in my hips. Yeah. So I went with the other route that's meant and designed for somebody that's little. Yeah. So I'll be more comfortable. Yeah. you got to be comfortable. That's right. I mean, that's one thing my dad always preached to me, and I'm mm -hmm. sure your dad said it to yes. you. And it's no different than uh, going out here and getting in a yep. vehicle on the street. Mm -hmm. If a little bitty guy's in that seat. He's going to have that seat where he wants it. And then yep. the taller guy, larger yep. guy jumps in. He's going to adjust it. He'd call me. He goes, Dad, I got the seat where I want, but now I need to move the steering wheel. Can, can I cut that thing off the, the front, off the bottom chassis? I said, yep. Just do whatever you got to do. <laughs> yep. So then he'd have to do that. Then he'd have to take seat you back. Change, you, yeah. change, you change one thing, it changes 10. Yep. Yeah. So. so really in the shop, 
nothing's really changed. You guys are both out there putting in the same amount of time as you was as when you were driving a car. He's not. He's no? not. No. So when you retired, you hung the helmet up. You you <laughs> even stayed out of the garage more. I will. I go watch my grandkids play sports. Now. Yeah. You know, I got my granddaughter playing. Well, she swims, she plays baseball, my grandson wrestles, plays basketball, so I go do that. Busy schedule. I go watch yes. them and stuff, and uh, I'll help him down there until i got to go do that, or, you know, like on a Saturday, if I ain't got nothing to do, me and he'll be down there and do yeah. that. But now, as far as, and I told him that was part of the deal, I said, you know, If you're going to do this, you got to take care of the car. Yep, you yep. got to take care of the car, it's still all my stuff, but he pays for all the gas to take it to the racetrack, it's not yeah. no free ride. Right. You know, of course, it's all my equipment, but still, you know, I said... It's your baby. Yeah. If you want it, you'll work at it. It's what well, my dad always used to say. If you want it bad enough, you'll be in there working. Yeah. If you want it bad enough, how how hard are you going to work at it? There you That's go. what Grandpa always said. Yeah. And if he, you know, he, you know, he'll call me if he, Dad, I got, he'll fix, yeah. you know, and I, I'll just tell him, yeah, hey, do it this way, do it that way, you know. That's part of learning, mm -hmm. you know. That's if you're going to stay in it long enough, there are times it's you're in a pinch. Yeah. You know, last year I went to Florida, me and my wife did, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I told him, I said, there's the keys to the truck trailer. And I said, you know, don't wreck it. Yeah, you be know. careful. Yeah, don't wreck it, you know. And yeah. I said, midnight, hey. midnight, I'm heading home, and I get a phone call. You headed home with my truck yet? No, I didn't. I didn't call He you was yet. more worried about the truck than he was the yeah, car. right, right. He didn't but, even care how you finished. No. It was just, no. is the truck okay? Yes. <laughs> is the truck made it home yet? But, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, I'll be there to help you if I'm, you know, but there are other things I want to do. I've done yeah. it for a long time. And right. Uh, that's understandable being you know that because when you raced you dedicated all your time to racing yep. Yep. and uh getting you know to that age where you can retire and mm -hmm. enjoy other things and i'm sure it's uh nice to be able to walk away from the shop and and know that when you do want to go to the track the mm -hmm. car is going to be there it's, it's going to be, be ready, ready and you get to watch him do it yep. now and, and that's and, what uh, i told him at bloomington i said you know There'd be a lot of times you're just going to take the truck trailer down there. I'm just going to show up when you're getting ready to race. Yeah. I don't have to be down there that early, you know. And uh, there's other times I'll go down there with you. And mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I'll be there when before he goes out on the track. It's just, right. You know, you'll find that out. You know, you get it in your blood. You don't, you know, he gets mad at me because I'm constantly, till this day, telling him, say, maybe we all do it this way. Maybe we all do it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking of something easier and better and Gosh, Dad, you think about us. Well, it is it is true. Once you start doing it, you eat, sleep, and breathe it. You think mm -hmm. about it twenty four seven. You don't. It it is addictive. Very yeah, addictive. Absolutely. It's uh, of course, you know, me growing up around it. My grandfather done it for years. Mm -hmm. Uncles, cousins, myself, and then yeah, it it does. It's a uh, it's kind of a a tradition. It's a mm -hmm. an addiction. It's yes. A, yep. You spend all your time doing it. You spend all your money to try to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's—I guess—it's what makes us who we are. Exactly we, uh, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we spend all our time in the shop and yep. do everything we can to try to, you know, get better as far mm -hmm. as the driver and as far as your equipment. And it takes that, to, especially to win races. Yep. And the um, night you win, you. You had everything working. Mm -hmm. Everything's working. Yeah, all the stars got to line up yep. just right for some of mm -hmm. us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it's it's like uh, what was it when me and Stevie Hawkins and Hollers raced and uh -huh. and they had it on that video where all three of us went three wide for a long time. You know, we did, that's what we go after. Yes. we all want to win. Right, and that's what we go there for. Yep. We all, but we all want to be competitive and, and be able to run each other clean. Clean and yep. don't want to just take somebody out or anything like that and run. And it's fun to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's what me and Steve Hawkins talked about uh, when he come down. Was he? He even made the comment like some of my funnest races have been running. You know, eighth, ninth, twelfth. Mm -hmm. I mean. And that's, I know me and you have had yep. great nights. Uh, yep. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But, yeah, anytime, like you said, you can run door to door and not be rubbing on each other, it's it's a blast. When you can go run on a Friday or Saturday night and you want enough money to pay for your gas to get there and your entry fee, you're doing it for a hobby. Yeah. And you're doing it for the fun of it. Right. And if you can run them guys clean and not tear up nothing and all you got to do is go home and wash it and check and boat check. That was a good weekend. It's a good weekend. Yeah. Everybody wants to win but there's only going to be one winner. Yeah. And uh, 
But if you think you got everything ready and you end up doing winning that night, that was a plus for you. Mm-hmm. He'll find that out if he stays yeah. in it long enough. He'll find that out. Then that the problem is once you win that first one, you now can, now you got to get the next one. And then yeah. you're like, man, I am I am good enough, and uh-huh. I've got good enough skills to do this. Yeah. So then you work twice as hard, and you start thinking twice as much things what to do uh-huh. with the car. And yeah. He makes fun of me when we put the bodies on him. I enjoy putting the body on a race car. You do? Enjoy. Yep. Oh, he, see, I hate it. He loves it. He, <laughs> I mean, I'll run the rivet gun. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, I'm right there with like, you. I'll know. put the rivets in. I'll pop them all day long. <laughs> yes. As long as somebody else is on the brake. <laughs> no, I'll somebody do the, else is cutting. I'll do the brake, too. Just like he can measure and cut. I enjoy doing that to make him look good and look slick. I, Uncle David, Uncle Tony, <laughs> them guys are ten man. I mean, they they can put them on there. Me, I'm over there like, put can it we on there, pay it. somebody to do this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I told him. I said, you got to learn to do all that stuff. I don't care to uh, copy them. You know, mm-hmm. let's say it's got a good body on it and yeah. you tear up a quarter panel or something. I mean, I'll take that quarter panel out, smash it out, <laughs> cut out a new one, and I can I can I can handle it, but I don't enjoy doing it at all. I need one of those big uh the old rollers like oh, concrete yeah, roller. Yeah, yeah. Just roll it out and <laughs> bend it back up and put it on. But big asphalt yeah. roller out there and that way you'd be done. Well now we know who the body man is in the yes. family. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, like you said earlier, it's all the part of learning it mm-hmm. because one day you're not going to be here. Yep. You're probably going to pass it on to your son. Yep. I mean, well, that's the plan. You know, it's uh, it's one of them deals you do. You got to learn it all. Uh, same deal. I mean, mm-hmm. I grew up with my dad at the track yep. uh, beside me every weekend. Every time we went racing, he was there. Yep. Um, very few times have I went to a track without him. Yep. Probably just most recently in my life that every once in a while he might be on vacation or something mm-hmm. and not get a go. But uh, I still, uh, you know, want him, want him for that advice. Right. I yep. might give him a call and ask him something. I do the same thing with some other family members like Joe. I reach yep. out to him a lot. And, uh, of course, when you're calling Joe, you know he's at a racetrack. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> yeah. bother him. Yep. But I'm going to anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 you always want someone to give you that yay or nay if this is a good well, idea. It's the, and, it's the old saying is, you know, there you watched your dad go through the race and all these years. Mm-hmm. Now you're doing it. So yep. you know he did it. Yeah. So you, when you go ask him, it might not be the answer you want to hear. Right. He might give you, you shouldn't have done this. Yeah. You shouldn't have done that. Then you go, gosh, what did I go ask him for? Because you wanted it enough. Right. And he was being honest enough with you say that. You need to, yeah. you need to tighten them belts up a little bit right. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's real quick to let me know when I'm wrong. <laughs> I know that. I know uh, it was kind of always the same way, though, whenever I was pretty young. uh you know, I, I started racing pretty young, and then I got out of it uh, whenever I started having kids. Mm-hmm. But I'd still go and help Dad and, you know, right. whatever he needed to do when he was running the bombers. And, uh, you know, I was always real quick to let him know where he made his mistakes. <laughs> of course, I was probably 18, 19 years old, probably a lot quicker to tell him then than i am now even. you probably didn't like the answer he gave you back though right did you? oh no yeah <laughs> it was uh it was always fun though i enjoyed a lot going with dad and and uh helping him as a child too mm-hmm. and and that's you know what this sport is all about i mean look here you've ran 30 some years yeah. of racing and now you're doing it and it's it's neat how families can yep. get that kind of tradition going and uh, your dad, he did drive mm-hmm. a, I don't know how long. I never did uh, I couldn't ask anybody you. that question. I, I'd have to ask. I don't even know if mom would know. Yeah. Back when he raced, it was the old Studebaker's Hawk. And I know your grandpa going to know that. Right. It was well, the car to get back then. It was fast. And they put a road cage in. You know, that was your race car. You yeah. It wasn't like all this technology stuff we got now. Right. And driving the race cars to the track. Back, yeah. You know, back then, if you had a junkyard for a sponsor hey you, you had was, her you made time. yep you had her mm-hmm. made because you could wreck that one and have another one for the next week be ready right. to go <laughs> yeah it's it's neat hearing the stories of the guys that in my opinion kind of got it started mm-hmm. around here as far as 
I just can't believe what all they did. And, of course, they weren't as safe as we are now. Mm-hmm. And Oh, no. Goodness. You see I, pictures of some of those cars they raced. It's I remember crazy. my dad told me he had, you know, Fry Auto Parts. He had that junkyard up there, which I know your dad and your grandpa mm-hmm. remember. Well, we had he had that he had two race cars and he had hardly good uh, his buddy he let his buddy drive it it was Sandy Pat and I remember it just like it was <laughs> and days after running first and second dad was leading it and Sandy was running second well Sandy one tried past that yeah took, took them both out oh, <laughs> yeah I've seen that happen in in our family <laughs> but dad said he didn't get mad because he said he didn't want him to settle you know if you're going to be a racer you gotta you want to be wanting to win yeah you, know? you, you can't just sit back settle right, for I'm a second say, yeah settle for a second right i remember that when i was a kid but it's memories it's, like that mm-hmm. is what you know sticks yeah. in your head yeah and you and you get to cherish those mm-hmm. memories and yeah even you know when someone's uh, no longer with us, mm-hmm. you know you can look back at those times yep. and just think about how much fun you guys had. And even even if it's not the good times, you know you're still spending time with your dad. Yeah, you know, or if it's your oh mom yeah, and I've got a list a mile long of bad things that's yeah. happened at yeah. the track I remember exactly. with my dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. but that one good moment, just like what I said on yeah. Father's Day, you know that makes it worth it. Hundred percent, right there. Something that you done, and yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Um, so you guys are, uh, you know, pretty big uh, Texas Roadhouse car. Yes, I know that. Yep, yep. Uh, always remember seeing the door panel hanging inside, <laughs> and always see your guys's post, and uh, of course it's on the trailer. Um, but who all do you guys actually have on the car for this coming season? This mm-hmm. coming season. We got to thank Texas Roadhouse out of Bloomington, Indiana, the Funeral Chapel, My Sports Locker, Ron Hardesty Insurance Agency, Dent Control, Paintless Dent Repair, Midnight Flyer, RW Transport, Rick Ball Excavating, Team and Tire, Express Waste Removal, Smoke and Lotto, Extreme Performance, Spec Racing Engines, Hoosier Grass Cutters, Steel Horse Saloon, Van Horn Racing Graphics, and Gum Chassis. Wow. It's no wonder you had to write it down. Yeah, and he 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 could have said all these without the cheat, yeah without the cheat sheet. Well, you've probably had most of them for years. I've had uh, they're one on there. I've had every year that I've raced. Is that right? He's yeah. been with Dad since Dad started. Yep, that is he, impressive. He stayed with me still this day, even and all. I've only lost one this year. And yeah. I can understand it when their business is slow, and yes. I, all I ask them is when I call them, and I think I normally call them in November and see if mm-hmm. we're going to do it for the following year, and and uh, he said, no, I just can't do it. Yeah. I, I'm all for that. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, right. You know, I'm not putting a gun to your head telling mm-hmm. you to give me that, you know, or whatever you want to help me with, but I am glad that, uh, you know, my contract was up for Roadhouse this year, and we negotiated, and we got two more years with him. So, nice. So yes. he's got two more years with him this year next year. Good so, deal. You know, and uh, hopefully the remainder of them, because, you know, we just do it year by year, the other ones, but, mm-hmm. you know, Texas is the primary sponsor. And, yep. And, uh, you know, they're out there. People try to ask me all the time how I get them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're out there. You just got to present yourself. and Right. You know, and... Uh, it's a you know it's an advertisement. Yep. So that's right. It's uh, it's like you said. You gotta you gotta you know present it in a way mm-hmm. that makes sense for the business yep. owner, and it's not easy. You gotta no. do your homework, and you gotta yes. keep trying. Yes. You get a lot more no's than you'll ever get yeses. Uh, but and you know, a lot of people forget that once you get a big sponsor like Roadhouse. You're basically their employee. Mm-hmm. So if they want that car up for, for touch a truck, yeah, or, or the car up for the kids on Monday night, mm-hmm. you better get home after Saturday night and get that car ready. You might be down there till two o'clock in the morning, then yeah. you work all day Sunday on it. It's till Sunday night till you go to work Monday. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have that car up here, yeah, you know, you're gonna let them down. Yep. And then they're going to start thinking, second guessing why they're done. I've always thought that was really cool. Yep. Them guys having you guys bring the car mm-hmm. over and uh, letting little kids get yep. in it. Mm-hmm. Those little kids that have already sat in your car over the mm-hmm. years, yeah, I guarantee you they remember it and will always remember it. I had it up there one Monday night, and uh, this 89 year old lady come over with her husband. 
This is a true story. I'm not making this up. She wanted to get in it. Nice. And he asked me, I said, sure, she can get in it. She wants that to. Is, that is and great. And she got in that car and sat down. She thought wow. that was just something. I bet. And, you know, I'm sitting there going, I got it up for, for kids night, and I got an 89-year-old kid yeah, in it. <laughs> right. Well, it probably made her even yeah. more than it did most of them kids. Exactly. And that's really neat. Uh, did you guys fire it up for her and let her take it around the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's neat. And, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, whatever the sponsors need out of a guy, when you're representing them on the track, you're also representing them at home. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, it's uh, social media nowadays mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. taking over, and yep. y- you just got to – treat it like a professional you know it is. career it, it, and yep. whether it's just a hobby or not mm-hmm. it's uh it's still a sport that we all love and you got to be as professional on the track just as you are off the track and our racers have brought it to that we've we've all been so competitive and gotten so competitive mm-hmm. that we've made it come to that to yeah where it, and you know it's it's no different than in nascar you know our little divisions that we got mm-hmm. they're expensive on a 40-hour work week a guy's what he's making it on his living mm-hmm. if he wants to be competitive there are ways for him to be competitive you just have to find the sponsor and, but once you do that that's another job you got to keep yeah. him happy like i said right and uh, you can do it it's it just, is it's a <clears throat> it's like having another full-time job yep. having a race car it is and going into that who who helps you guys actually maintain the car through the week? Are you doing it by yourself? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So dad's yep. ditching you in the shop and only helping you when you need it, really. Pretty much, pretty so. much. But, I mean, I got a few buddies. We got a buddy, Ken, that helps us every now and then. And then this year I think I've got a um, Chris Hanners that runs the 18H. We're going to kind of buddy up and we're going to be pit buddies, you know, and help each other when we need it. And That's then I got, good. I got a couple other buddies that are going to – I think helping at the racetrack and it makes a difference a bit, when you so. got some guys that uh, that enjoy going, yeah, and mm-hmm. you know that don't care to donate time, and right? Effort because it takes a lot of it. Yes, and, and, you know you have all them people. Well, oh yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you. Help you. And mm-hmm. They come and help you. Maybe might one, show up when the green flag's flying, well, or yeah. they'll come, <laughs> exactly. or they'll come to the shop and they'll help you one night. And then when they come to the races, you know. You're over doing stuff on the car, and they're like, well, they want to go up and watch the races. Yeah. And I understand it. They pay to get in. You right. Know? Uh, but, you know, to me, I've got to told him, I said, you need to buddy up with somebody that's going to go to the races with you that races a car, too. Because mm-hmm. you both can help each other. You're both dedicated. That's yeah, that's Because me and Gerald Todd, the late Gerald Todd, was buddies. We saved yep. up our spots up there at Bloomington and had Ben Dubois and Kevin Arthur, and we was all... Mm-hmm. But me and Gerald, I'd go down to Gerald's shop, help him on his car. He'd come up to mine. Yeah. You'd get another driver's idea, you mm-hmm. know, where you're looking at You know how you look at something so long, you start second-guessing yourself. Right. Then you got another buddy come in and race. No, let's do it this way. Hey, yeah, that's a good idea. So, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a, it's just hard to find somebody nowadays because they're so competitive. Yep. They don't want you knowing anything you're doing to your car. Right. But, hey, I don't want yeah. you outrunning me, you know. Right. But me and Gerald would go back and forth. We didn't care. We if you outrun me on the racetrack, it's a good night. Yeah. And that's the way me and him thought of it. Right. And that's that's true. Whenever you're running against someone, that <clears throat> whether it's a, like I know me and Joe used to run against each other back mm-hmm. when we were younger in the modified division. And it was always nice to, whether he was running better than me or mm-hmm. if I was running better than him, it was still, you know, you're – always there to help each other bounce ideas off each other i miss those days but well you can um, discuss hey i'm trying this top shock or i'm trying this mm-hmm. i'm trying that well i'm gonna try this and you, you know you both ain't gonna be worried about who outruns each other you're yeah. helping each other out to maybe get better and move on and and I miss them days, too, because, it's, yeah. I mean, we've done it to ourselves by cost-wise of the expense of a car, mm-hmm. and, you know, and then some people get mad because, hey, he's got more sponsor money over than me, and they're out there. You just got to work for it, like I said. Right. And, uh, but still, you can have the biggest sponsor in the money in the world. You uh-huh. can't drive it, and you can't figure out what to do to the car out there. You ain't going to go to the front anyway. Right. Well, I remember coming up uh, to Bloomington running, and... uh 
Travis Todd mm -hmm. would still park next to you. Yep, yep. So you guys, you know, mm -hmm. were able to yep. still save spots and help oh, yeah. each other. Yep. And mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to keep doing that, yep. that mm -hmm. that's great. As far as I know, I, I don't know if Travis is going to run or not. I since we didn't run at last all last time year, I talked to him, he acted like he was going to try to. Yeah, because we didn't run at Bloomington all last year, and uh, but you know if we do, it, we'll probably still be right there in the same spot where we always did, yeah. you know. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I told him. I said Bloomington's a fast track where you blink your eye, you're in trouble. Where Brownstown, yeah. it seems like you know it's still fast, but mm -hmm. it's wide. And you can get out of trouble quicker at Brownstown than you can Bloomington. Yeah, it it will. It it's a blast, <laughs> but man, yeah, like right now, yeah. and you could be in a seven car pileup. Yep. Especially coming off a of four. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> All it takes is for one guy to one make guy out one mistake. mistake. Yep. And it can really tear some stuff up he, real he'll quick. He'll find it real quick how to build the body. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, especially up there. I mean. I'm going to borrow his asphalt, asphalt roller. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Just right. roll it out. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a fun track. I'm really glad to see that uh, the spikers are going to be able to get yep. it going uh, as far as more scheduled races, uh, putting time and money into the place. I mean, I'm excited to see the turnout he has and see, oh, yeah. how, see how it comes along. Me too. I, I, think, th I think he'll be all right. With I do it. too. You know, it's, the biggest drawback uh, since Mike's and Judy's not had that track was the roughness of the track. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, I mean, we was breaking stuff and mm -hmm. tearing it. And as long as they keep the track like it was with Mike and Judy, and I heard Henry was supposed to be the one going to run to take care of the track. If that's true, that's great. Because, uh, you know, if you're going to run on Friday and Saturday night, you go up there and it's, you know, a corn cob you're racing on. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go Brownstown, you're yeah. going to break. It's, you can't see it because fatigue's going to break. And and that's, you know, you, you know as well as I do, you go run on a rough racetrack, yeah. you might not see any problems. It though. might not happen until the next night or the night after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, we got too much money in these shocks and everything else now. And, yeah. And uh, so I'm hoping he... He can control it. I think he will. Everybody's got to give him, you know, give him this year at least and next yeah. year. Yeah. Because there's still a lot of changes he's wanting to do, and mm -hmm. I think it'd be for the better. I don't want to ever see that track shut down. Yeah, me neither. You know? It's – I've always – I've always felt like Brownstown was my home track. Yeah. Because that's where you'd find all the Godsies on a Saturday. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I got older and – uh got back into racing after sitting out for a long time uh i felt like bloomington was kind of more mm -hmm. my home track yep. i don't know in the super stocks anyways but we we uh we like them all oh, you yeah. know i like <laughs> i like paragon i like yep. putnamville i like any track Terre Haute, eldora it don't matter mm -hmm. if you drive one hour or 18 hours i, I like them <laughs> so you're, you're sitting in the truck the yeah. whole time going there think about what you're going to do when you get to yeah there. oh yeah <laughs> well you know it's one of them deals where the last thing any of us want to see is any of the tracks getting getting to the point where they're getting ready to close yep. i mean the fact that they've uh taken paragon and turned it around mm -hmm. i mean yep couldn't happen at a better time as far as uh putting you know the lights and mm -hmm. new uh Yep. building entering the pits and i mean really putting time and effort into it and uh you know we've all been fortunate enough brownstown's been there since what 52 i think yep. i mean mm -hmm. that's that place is great you know i, love it, I do too it's and they do a great job running the mm -hmm. program yep. you get home at a reasonable time yep. I wish all the tracks, I know a lot of people's going to probably doubt me on this, but I wish all the tracks would rotate every division. Yeah. Now, I'm not criticizing late models or sprint cars. No, I, I get that. And I think, because, you know, we go in and redraw. Mm-hmm. Everybody, sometimes this is a terrible drawer. Mm-hmm. I think the fans need to see the fast, how much faster late model street stock modified is comparing so I think that the, this is my opinion. If mm -hmm. I had a track, I'd have to at least look into this. Sure. First night, you qualify your whoever runs first is qualifying that night. And that gives the guy if you Levi Gotzi goes out right. and he makes a terrible qualifying. Well, you know where you're going to start. It's because right. you didn't qualify. I agree. I next week, agree. next week, 
that whoever qualified to run first that night going to run last next week. And the reason why I say that, prime example, when me and Steve Hollers and, mm-hmm. and Hawkins ran, you know, the sprint car people's already gone and left. Yeah. And if they would stay, they might see some good racing in right. modified streets. Oh, they and would. And, you know, it, you got to keep your fans there, keep your concessions open a right. little bit longer. Sell more hot dogs. Sell more hot dogs. Mm-hmm. I agree. Get it, Give the qualifying back. Get the qualifying back out there and let these how fast these cars are now. Let them yeah. get out there. And I'm not saying group qualifying. I'm thank saying, you. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> I'm not saying group qualifying. Uh-huh. I'm saying the way it used to be. You there know, you go. I mean, I want you know they say oh they ain't got the time to do it. Yes, they do. They've mm-hmm. got the time. You got your program running. You can do it. And I just think it puts the fans back into it. I can't believe he's that much faster yeah. than the other guy. Prime example. You, you watch Gilpin go out there. Uh-huh. You know, he's run that racetrack down at Brownstown. He could close, we could tape his eyes shut, probably, yeah. and he could make it. Right. And, you know, look how good he qualifies. And Boatnik's the same way in a street mm-hmm. stock, you know, and them guys. Yep. I'm not quit, just throwing some names out there. I just think we need to get back to qualifying. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> I know it's got to be tough for a promoter as far mm-hmm. as how they do things, and no matter what you do someone else is not going to agree with it constantly but i feel like uh they need to take a vote on jack fry's proposal (laughs) (laughs) well i know i understand exactly what you're saying you cannot make everybody happy right but levi back in the old days every division qualified yep everybody did yeah you know remember when they used to put the fast ones in the very back well and one thing i've had on my mind a lot uh, in the last few years is just uh, how much I enjoyed as a child mm-hmm. watching trophy dashes. Yep. yep. Uh, you know, top four guys, mm-hmm. let's do, you know, yep. a trophy dash and rotate that out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it ain't got to be the late malls every weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I realize they bring in a lot of the crowd, especially on the big show mm-hmm. nights. But uh, like you said, there's a lot of people in them stands, and not, not all of them are there just for – one specific division. Right. Them Hornet cars, they bring in so many fans and mm-hmm. so many family members. So, well, rotating out's a great idea. I just think we have got away from it a little bit. It don't make no difference if you're a sprint car driver or late model driver. Mm-hmm. Some of them drivers have started out in a street stock right. and, and moved herself up. Yeah. And it costs you, if you're a sprint car driver, Hornet driver, all of us, it costs us the same amount to get in the pits. Mm-hmm. Sure, we don't make as much money as if in a Hornet compared to late model. Right. But let that late model or sprint car show run last at least once a month or mm-hmm. every fifth week, however you want to do it. Yeah. Keep the fans there. And, you know, of course, Brady Short would love that. He loved it black and slick. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. No way out 40. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't you know. know. It's just He can put it around there. You just got to get the fans back into it. You know, you got to get the our younger generation don't want even want to work on nothing and yeah. and, dri- and drive one anymore. Right, and that's getting scary. Yeah, it it's definitely changed a lot. Yes, it I'll is. say that. But uh, well, I mean, maybe uh, maybe somebody be listening to you. <laughs> I, I, they could take a vote. Well, from the yeah, fans. you just need to draw something up, <laughs> take it around the track, you know, get a petition going, get a petition going, <laughs> see how many signatures you can get. Well, go. I'd say if you'd stand down at the end and you ask the fans that come in, no matter what racetrack you're at, yeah, do you want to see qualifying? And they yeah. all want to see qualifying. And please, no group. <laughs> no, no. I, well, to me, even if uh, if they was going to qualify, like if. Just say Bloomington did that rotation or Brownstown. Mm-hmm. Go out and try to find a sponsor for whoever gets the fastest qualified just for that division that night. Going to get 100 bucks, 150 125 dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you go out there and win that qualifying, that's 125 bucks or 100 bucks. you know. Yeah. And you're going to see who's going to go out there and put the foot in the foot. Just, it's no different than when we run to Scott Patman. Yeah. You know. I hear I had the fastest time for a while until I looked down there and see who's in a lineup shooting there boat Nick out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, didn't have that very long. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, but you know, some people enjoy qualifying. Yeah. Oh, I know. Me as a child, uh, I mean, I grew up at the track, mm-hmm. so I'd watch my grandmother sit there. She'd have two stopwatches on that pit yep. board, and yep. there was not one lap Grandpa made. I don't care if it was hot laps. Mm-hmm. Whatever it was, but she, didn't she, know the time. she had the times. Mm-hmm. I mean, he knew, and he could go back. I don't care if it was seven years later. He knew <laughs> that day, that lap, 
<laughs> how fast he was. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but growing up watching him qualify and, you know, all the Jim Curry and mm -hmm. Steve Barnett, yep. all them guys, uh, you know, it was, to me, I, I, I enjoyed sometimes watching them qualify more mm -hmm. than I did watching them race because you could actually – even whenever I was like seven, eight years old, I mean, I remember how hard them guys would put it around there, and sometimes barely lifting at all. Sometimes. Well, that also that gives the people like people up in the stands that don't go there all the time. Mm -hmm. They can see that car going out there by itself, and they, yeah. hey, I know that number of that car now. Still yeah. coming out there on the line in a heat, and you know they don't mm -hmm. get to pay attention as much. Yeah, that's true. And, and I don't know, I just, that's just my opinion, you mm -hmm. know, it's been around it enough. Yep. I don't want to ever see it die, but I think you put it between the seat and the steering wheel then, at least for that. I understand you ain't going to run four or five divisions qualifying, but you at least can rotate it and do one. Yeah. You got to change it up. Don't do it just because Puttonville or mm -hmm. these other tracks do it th that way. Let's change it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, um, so do you guys uh... – you guys have any plans to try to hit Paragon or Putnamville or anywhere else, or just That's, Brown Sound Bloomington's going to be your gonna, main focus? We're going to mainly play that by ear. I've I'm just really going to focus on Bloomington and Brownstown, and yeah. I've got I've got my goal of 35 nights I want to run. Nice. And if there's a couple weekends in there, if my work will play to it, and mm -hmm. Brownstown may not be running, I may go hit somewhere else. But for the most part, it's going to be Bloomington and Brownstown. And see, Paragon's supposed to be running a couple of Friday night shows too. Yeah. Bloomington's not. Yeah. You know, and I told him, you know, that's a if I ain't got to work, if I ain't got to work on that Saturday night, we yeah. may go up there. And Probably depends on how good you're. you're yeah, I'm sure knowing you guys are uh, fries, that you're going to be. We're chasing for points. Yes, so, yes, I am chasing. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> so with that being said, chances are you might be making all these decisions based off of how well you're running in the points. Yes, on very taking much so. a chance of tearing the car up over here one night. Yep, yep. that all weighs into the points, and mm -hmm. points are really play with your head. Yep. Yes, that's true. They do. They do big time. Mm. <laughs> big time. Yep. Sometimes it takes the fun out of it. Correct. You got to be careful. Yep, you're right. But uh, well, I definitely appreciate you guys coming down today. Appreciate you having yep. us. Yep. It appreciate was uh, nice to be able to talk some dirt racing. Oh yeah. Hopefully on the way back there's still daylight. Now we've had daylight savings time. You guys <laughs> yeah. will be able to enjoy the scenery that Jack won instead of the scenery you got. <laughs> no, on the way on the way home he'll be wondering where we're going to eat. Yeah, right. yeah, there exactly. you go. I got a feeling I know where you guys are going to end up. <laughs> yeah. Anybody want to bet a dollar? <laughs> I don't know. We're we're pretty close to his wings and rings. He oh, likes okay. he likes there too. I like yeah. that too. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah, I like that too. But a steak sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Roadhouse it's, it's always hard good. to pass up a good steak. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It is. It is. You well, know. Well, guys, again, appreciate you both coming yep. down tonight, and uh, wish you guys a good, safe, successful summer. Hopefully, uh, we get to see you guys. Uh, you know, get some good finishes this season. Yep. Never know, man. You might go out there and set the world on fire this summer. That's the goal. That's what the was plan. the best finish you had last season? Uh, last season, sixth was the best finish I had last season. It's not bad. Best finish overall is fourth, though, so far. So, well, there you go. So Well, that's, I mean. Just be competitive. Whatever. It's tough. Go out there and run your line and be There's competitive. There's some good competition down yeah. there at Brownstown. Yeah, yes. They are. And all tracks, but Brownstown specifically, mm -hmm. all divisions, it's stacked. Yeah. So. And, you know, that's the reason why you do it. Yeah. You, you want to, you know, what, if everybody could win. Yeah. Everybody would have one. Yeah. It don't work that way. <laughs> right. Well, again, we uh we hope to see you guys there at the track and uh getting some good finishes and uh appreciate you guys both coming down. Thanks uh, for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Well that concludes another episode of Off the Track. If you have not already, uh be sure and check us out on our Facebook page, give us a like. You can also check us out at uh, bluechiptech.net or give us a call at 812-807-7050 for all your engine needs. Thank you and have a great night.